Welcome everyone. Uh, great pleasure here to have this young man, uh, Frank Kelly, guitarist of the Canadian band Paradise. They just uh, they released their self-titled album back uh, in March. It's available right now on, uh, on Spotify and uh, your favorite streaming service. And he's on right here on the program to talk about uh, the band's latest album. Uh, they were on hiatus, but they came back and they put some, some good music. And thank you for that, especially during this time. We need some fresh content because, as you know, Frank, uh, it's the only thing that's keeping us uh, entertained uh, as we stay home and fight this, this darn pandemic coronavirus. But, Frank, man, yeah. thanks for joining us here on the program. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Cool, cool to be here. So, Frank, I was checking out the, obviously, Paradise and, and Good Stuff really bringing in that that fast paced good vibes type of music one of my favorites actually is uh, all 60s all sixes um get that that good tune you know that good vibe and uh, again this this record dropped back in march so what has been the feedback so far this just happened what right when pretty much the, the, in the beginning of, uh, of the whole covid 19 pandemic pretty much when your album dropped so you were scheduled to yeah. go out on the road right yeah, we did our uh, launch party, and then, uh, like, yeah, everyone was uh, on lockdown. <laughs> so, so at least though, the fans are able to enjoy it at home. You know, sometimes when a band goes out, they, they go and, and, and release one or two songs from the new album that give them, like, a teaser. But now people really have a chance to digest it and really get a feel for it before they go and see you guys um live on stage so what, what has been the feedback though from the fans what have you heard um as uh, far as in the record it's kind of cool because we uh we, we've never so, sold so many downloads so uh digital albums are selling like crazy uh we have like a lot of views on our uh media like social media pages yeah so i know it's been great so far that, that is awesome and except I know for, yeah uh -huh. that, that's it except for the like not playing shows and venues and that's like the downside but on the the upside yeah I think uh, there's a good reception and what what can you tell me as far as a new album which, which is one of your your favorites out of all the the, the tracks <laughs> you know that's a tough one always right <laughs> I, like, I think that's uh, Straight From Hell like I mm. think it's it, just a, a good track that represents like the whole records like in that song you have a like i i think most of the record in there who do you want to be the good song i think also uh catchy hooks uh yeah so l looking at here you guys uh in 2005 you, you launched a couple of albums and you, you took a hiatus you took a break and then uh you're back again this is this is something that you know, some bands tend to do when they come back, they come stronger and better. Uh, but, I mean, tell me this story because this, this, is, this is unique in itself. I mean, you guys, you took that break, the 15-year break, uh, but you guys made up and produced this record. How did this all come about? What made you guys come together? Uh, well, a lot of hap happened, like, in 15 years. Uh, we went separate ways. Uh, I did different things in life. Uh, then I had another project with uh, Black, uh, our singer. It was called R.L. Black. It was more on the uh, like kind of a nine inch nail kind of vibe uh, type of thing. But it was too complicated. Like uh, too much key, too many key keyboards, uh, too many uh, technology involved. So uh, we, tr we thought it was. It could be cool to go back to just amps and pedals and real guitars and and uh, have fun with it again. So that's what happened uh, a year ago. And we got back to rehearsing just for fun Friday night, a bunch of friends having beers. Uh, but phone phone rang, uh, record label called us, and then shows and then touring. So like we're back. <laughs> so, so how did that how did they come back I mean we have some we've heard some bands that they break up you know they come back and they said it all started with a text <laughs> or it all started with uh, with a phone call um, you know how, how did the ball get rolling I mean were you guys still though in communication throughout this time and we're kind of just playing with the idea and then you know what 
Let's just do it. Let's get together. Uh, like I said, we, I think mm -hmm. we uh, just we, we missed uh, we missed uh, mm. making noise mm. and uh, be be around uh, each other. You know, uh, bass players like brother. Like it's pretty much we're pretty much like all best friends in the band. Mm. So uh, so why not like have our like Friday night break, playing music, have fun, uh, away from from like uh, this and take the time away from our uh, girlfriends and wives. <laughs> uh, that's it. And uh, I think when you have fun like this and when you you do it like just for the, the, the pleasure of it, mm -hmm. I think things tend to happen, you know? So during that time though, uh, so, you, so you guys were in communications. Yeah. You guys were just performing for the hell of it, just not producing records? That's it. We, we, we were still like hanging out mm. for, uh, for all those years. We just had uh, different projects, different jobs. Uh, you know what? How life is. Uh, yeah. uh, stuff happens, you know. So how? I think just uh, now uh -huh. the, the planets were uh, were in line for uh, for this to happen now. How, how different would you say the band is now compared to when you guys started? What are some, of course, you guys matured, you guys have families, you have children, and how how does that play a role in, in the music that you guys write and produce now? I think we came back with a lot more, uh, um, like we, 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 15 years, you do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we, we came back with, uh, with, um, I think with the, the better equipped, I, I don't know how to say it, but, um, uh, anyway, yeah, I think you just, better equip you you learn things and you have 15 years of hard work behind you uh doing like all other stuff or even music because we've been playing music uh, also but so uh, you can hear it in the in the new record would you say that the writing producing this 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 record because you had that experience 15 years ago the process was smooth because it was kind of like it was already brewing you know, it's just a matter to just pour it all in and, and, and make it taste and feel good. You know, you added that sugar and that cream. You stir it up and it tastes good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I think you're right. Yes, it just it just felt pretty uh, easy and simple, and it just yeah, it just it just made sense. You know. Now I, I was so, so yes, uh -huh. it was it was pretty easy to to to, to record. It it just came really naturally. It, it's almost you know I, I would I guess I would, I would compare you know if you exercise. You you're, you've been at the gym for many many years, and you take like a I don't know a year off, and it's just muscle memory. Like it's just it just you automatically you just automatically re remember it, and it just comes out like a natural. It's like another instinct that you have, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what that's what happened. So one cool that's story here. One cool story here that I have: you guys toured in Cuba, and yeah. <laughs> you gave away uh, merchandise. To the folks down there, including uh, an amp, to one of the opening bands, how the heck did that happen? Please let me know. And and and, and how how did they pair you up with this this the, these other bands in this in this uh you know this bill? Um, uh, th that's an interesting story in yourself. Can you can you elaborate on that? It's uh it was uh, I, it was a pretty magical moment. Uh, it was one of those phone calls, like I told you. Mm -hmm. We're just back into uh, rehearsing. Album was coming. Uh, like we're, we're recording the right in the middle of recording the uh, the album. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend told me uh, I got a call from the, this dude. He needs he, like he needs a band, uh, Canadian band, and uh, we can't make it. You guys want to do it? So uh, we called the guy. He heard our stuff. He said, "You guys would be great on the tour." So we kind of tried it. Mm -hmm. We know it was going to be a, a pretty like wild ride because you know like they don't have like anything over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you should have seen the gear we were playing on. It was pretty uh, pretty crazy and pretty dangerous at, at one point. Uh, but it, the, the response over there was it was amazing. We played we played the uh, organ on three nights for. Uh, 300 to 400 people a night was just first note you play they're in your face they're screaming their heads off wow uh, 
There's a huge metal scene over there. Uh, we were one of the softest oh. rock bands over there. <laughs> like they, they're wow. really into doom and metal. It's like pretty hardcore metal. Uh -huh. So uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, Havana was uh, pretty crazy also because we played on the uh, Sepultura gear that they left there on their Whoa. last tour. Wow. So uh, yeah, it's like we had great stories, great and just, like met great people. And yeah, you heard the story. Uh, they have nothing over there, you know. They uh, they don't have amps, they don't have guitars or like even strings, guitar strings, bass strings. Uh, they, they they don't have like access to any of that. So, uh, yes, we left everything there. Wow. And, and when was that? What year was that? Sorry? that when, when, when did you guys go out there? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I had a hard time. Where, where, what, year, what year did you guys go out there and, and toured in Cuba? And it was, oh, last year. Last year. Oh, last year. And uh, so, th so this yeah, so yeah. it was just one, one show, or were you there for a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days in, in no, perform? Yeah, we, were, we were there 14 days. A whole bunch of shows. Wow, that that is crazy. crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now here, well, here's one thing you know, it, it amazes me, and you see this in metal, in any metal show, outside of the the, the United States or Canada, uh, and you see it's like when you see Metallica, or hell, Sapatora or Lincoln Park, whatever you may be, and they go to other countries like in Mexico, or uh, or Russia, or you know all these other countries. They don't know any English, but the only English they know, they get it through metal. I I, I never really understood that, but so it's amazing how uh, these these folks out there in, in other countries they, they, they tend to learn their English uh, because of metal music, and it just unites everyone and brings everyone together. It does. I think uh, I think it's music in general, but particularly. Uh, metal I uh -huh. think yeah I think it brings people together uh, you, do, you don't need to speak the language or you don't need to, to to be from the same background or anything but once it starts people just get crazy and have fun together that's pretty crazy so were there some great mosh pits over there I know security it uh, could be a I would assume a little <laughs> different but do they allow mosh pitting do they allow crowd surfing uh, tell me the experience Uh -huh. We're more of a uh, we're more of a like party, sure. Uh, you know, hard rocking band. A little crowd but surf yeah, though. We're, yeah, we're, we're like a, yeah, a crossover with we're really like in between metal and, and uh -huh. hard rock. And, uh -huh. But um, but yes, and I, we've seen crazy shit going on over there. At, at, we've seen like punks uh, with like tattoos all over their their faces and screaming and just uh, having have, having a like. A great time, trashing, mosh pitting, that like name it. It was it was really crazy. Wow, that's a quite amazing stuff there. That you know, <laughs> not too many bands could say. You know, one band that comes to mind that went to Cuba and performed. That's the Rolling Stones. Um, yeah. You know, and they packed that place up like there's no tomorrow. And you can just tell, um, government, you know, po politics aside, uh, how 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 humble these people were. You know, and everyone came together. Um, I mean, you know, it sucks in the conditions that they are, but the the point of the matter is that people come together. Um, you know, not religion, not politics, but music. Music brings everyone together, and it, it doesn't matter how you look, what you believe, whatever. Music it will is, 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 is what drives it's people. Best we have, we have had in years. It's the best round we've had in years. It was crazy. It was magical. Yeah. We're and, going back. Oh, are you? So, so when, 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 when are you guys planning to go back? Of course, after this whole I, pandemic. I, I don't know because with, with everything, with right. everything going on, like we had a whole bunch of dates also in Europe and everything that, that were uh, that were canceled. But uh, uh, as soon as we can go, we'll go back for sure. Great people, like it's people are amazing there. So you, is amazing. so you just performed in Havana. You didn't perform in any of the other. Um, I think they call them yes, providences. Yes. Oh, you did. Uh, yeah, we played in Olgin. We played. Uh, Different places, yeah. Wow, quite a you know, and in, in, in every town and every I believe they call them provinces over there. Um, they are different. So where, what area would you say, aside from Havana, right? Because it's the capital. I would assume that that's where the most people go and 
you know, they, they got a lot of rowdy. But what other place really intrigued you? We've had the best crowds ever. Uh-huh. Havana is like all the big cities in the world, I think. Uh-huh. People love Havana. Uh-huh. Uh, when you, you play, uh, when you play, uh, I don't know, you play London or you play uh, Paris or you play Montreal or New York, mm-hmm. people are looking at you like, well, they're, they're all looking at each other. Like, can I have fun? Is it okay to, to like them? Is it like people are more like serious? Like they take themselves more seriously. Huh. Um, when you play out of like out of town, the same thing in Cuba. Uh-huh. Uh, they, like they, they don't care about anything. Like you're just, you're just happy you're there, like they're into the music, they just like go crazy and that's it. So um, yes, I think it was, it was better out of town. Like it's always better uh, out, of the, out of the big cities. How, how about the food? Uh, I, you know, I was in, in Canada uh, about two years ago. I didn't go to Montreal, but I, I went to Toronto and I went to um, Vancouver. Um, yeah. Here in Miami, we're pretty much filled with Cubans, so we got Cuban shops and Cuban restaurants everywhere, but how about you, man? Was that yeah. the first time you tasted Cuban food, uh, or had you tasted no, Cuban No, no, no. We, us in, uh, in Quebec, we, go, we have a, like a huge, uh, I don't know, love story with Cuba. Like, people go there in Cuba a lot, and uh, I've been to Cuba a lot. Huh. Uh, my mother lives in Cuba six months a year, so... Wow. Uh, so, yes, uh, no, we, we, like, we were really aware of it it's like we know of the cute cuban culture but i didn't know there was so much metal and hard rock over there yeah and, and, and you know it, it's funny because some of the music that you know with this metal music that they play and perform out there um if you really listen to it some of it is actually for the government and some of it is against the government and i don't know if the government's aware of it but um it, and it's quite amazing you know how much of a, a message that these, these people put out some of them you know the government does get a hold of them, and you know they they, they lambast them. But yeah, it, it is. It, there is a huge, uh, huge uh, support for metal. Um, yes, and, and they they have mm-hmm. like and they have loads of bands, and they have loads of good bands uh, over there. It's just like you should uh, look into it also. Yeah, especially in your area, you get yeah. a, a lot of. Them. <laughs> the oh, Cubans that uh, listen to them, I'm sure. Oh, we have tons of them here. In fact, they're. Not too long ago, I encountered a band down here. They, they, they are originally from Cuba, and they came down here, and uh, they were performing. So uh, it, it's quite amazing. And, and again, um, uh, I'd like to invite everyone to head on to their, their favorite streaming uh, service and uh, listen to Paradise's new self-titled album. Uh, it's totally rocking. It's, you know, being in quarantine, I forgot if I'm on a, on a Saturday or a Friday. Every day to me is the same. So just kick back and, 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 and pump uh, Paradise's new album, you're definitely going to enjoy it. Grab a cold one. I prefer tequila. That's just me. But uh, just sit back and enjoy it. You know what I mean? And, and Frank, I want to thank you for your time. And, and next time you guys go to uh, Cuba, make sure you you know, stop down here by Miami. We'd love to have you. <laughs> it's on the way. We're only 90 miles away. <laughs> I'll have a tequila on me. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're only 90 miles away from Cuba, so you know. <laughs> We're not that far. <laughs> well, Frank, thanks so much for your time, man. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to, uh, to catching new music. Of course, the current album is available now. And uh, hopefully seeing you on stage very, very soon. Thanks for the interest, man.